Do you remember the exact date you came to Los Angeles? I do actually. Uh, September 18th, 2012 was the day I took off from Chicago yeah, and landed. It was, uh, it was a big transition. I had an awesome life in Chicago. I had a good job. I had a great relationship and it was just one of those things where um, it was kind of that now or never breaking moment where, and I'm someone that's like, you got to take a risk or else you may regret it the rest of your life. I'd rather take a big challenge, a big risk and fail than to never do it and live my whole life just wondering what if. So luckily I had the support of people that were close to me, family and friends and pushed me to do it in the most positive way, which is really, really beneficial in this type of situation, especially coming from where I was. Like it wasn't like, I was very, very happy back in the Midwest, but there was like we talked about, there's just something missing and this is what I want to do. So in order to do it full time, had to make a move either east or west and I'd take sunshine year round <laughs> when I can. And so you had like a, a nine to five job and- Yeah, you know, I was an account benefits. director. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, benefits, all right. that good stuff. It was kind of, you know, same thing, wake up, gym. That's a plug to tell everyone that I go to the gym. Obviously, <laughs> uh, and then go to go to work, but you know, working eight hours a day, and you find out half the time is I'm writing sketches or writing this or researching how to actually possibly make the jump or going on auditions for whatever it may have been, TV shows, commercials in Chicago, and it just got to the point where my hobbies, my my hobbies, my extracurriculars were, um, you know, they were taking over what I was actually getting paid to do. So it was just kind of that breaking point where I just got to do it, and it's. The right choice yeah do you remember was there like a day that you, let's say you went to lunch and something triggered in your mind you're like i i can't go back to that desk or maybe uh, i'm just putting words in your mouth no but. i will tell you <laughs> the story okay you're gonna this is a very vague weird references i really really wanted to see snow white and the huntsman Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what shocks you. That movie? Is that what it was? Just no, that just, I just that? Okay. that was the impetus for you to No, it's just what okay, I remember. That. I remember it was early uh -huh. summer. You know what? I'm going to rephrase that. Sure, sure. I went with someone that really wanted to see Snow White and the Huntsman. I'm kidding. I actually really wanted to see oh, okay. the movie. Um, and it was just kind of that night where we got to talking and it was one of those types of you know moments in the roller coaster life that is the entertainment industry that things were going really well and it was just kind of that push to like you got to do it now or you're never gonna you're never gonna feel fulfilled you're never gonna be content so it's like let's do it so three months later I moved Wow, so, yeah. so did you were planning it out then, obviously, like giving your two weeks? Yeah, and, I gave, and, uh -huh. and you know, it was one of those things that was always subconsciously in the back of my mind type thing, put it in my back pocket, improv term. Anyways, uh, so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I kind of always was saving up a little bit just in case, um, because I wanted to come out and give it 100%, you know, not get into that rut that I was in Chicago, where I was working a nine to five, could only do it half the time, like I wanted to commit everything to it so it was like you said i i from that moment on i was planning for the fall so it gave me you know whatever that time from was three four months um yeah i gave my two weeks notice my job was they were the best they're meeting tomorrow go to them for all your audio visual audio visual and technology needs uh meeting tomorrow.com they were great even to the point where they're like for some reason you get you get sad out there, you can come on back. Aww, um, so yes. that, I mean, having that behind you is great. Um, but yeah, planned it out accordingly. Um, luckily I had my good friend still living out here, stayed with him for the first week or two until I found my own place. And then here we are. And you said previously you came here with three suitcases? Oh yeah, so that was kind of a, you know, I had a nice place in Chicago, I had all my stuff there and it was, ship some of, some of it back home to Ohio to my mom, which she was not happy about, and then put some of it in storage just in case, and then get rid of some of it. You know, no one wanted my stuff. Not like I had cool things anyways back then, or <laughs> now. Um, but yeah, and then it was pack up just what I need, because it was September, so the holidays hit. So it was like I was back and forth a little bit back to Midwest for Thanksgiving and around Christmas and New Year's. Um, you know, so finally like early, 2013 is when I really felt mm. like I was here. On September 18th, 2012, mm -hmm. when you were sitting in that airport um, waiting to go through the checkpoint and you know have your baggage yeah. searched or whatever they were going to do, was there like this twinge of like, what am I, did you have any kind of moment like that? Like, what am I doing right now? You know what? I didn't have it until I landed um, because I went with somebody to the airport, meant a lot to me. So it was a very supportive, like, you know, go get them. It was Louis 
God, Junior. Cla no, was that him? No. Who? Who's in Rudy? Anyways, the Rudy clap at the end. I'm sorry, I just screwed up whoever he is. No, 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 that's fine. That was that's funny. That's <laughs> but was that funny. was what yeah. it was like. It was a very uh -huh. positive moment. Uh, but then when I landed here, I was landing to LAX at 1130 at night with three bags, getting my rental car, driving up the 405, learning that you put the in front of all of the numbers of the freeway, learning to call it a freeway instead of an expressway. All that just added up to like, holy, you know, crap what are we doing in a, in kind of a crazy sense to go from like that comfortable life where I'm, you know, everyone from high school to college is grade school is all the way around you. Awesome support system to basically starting over and being, you know, by yourself again out this way. It was scary, but like you said, I didn't hit it until I got here. Until I got on that shuttle to get my rental car. You started to feel like, no, I never second guessed it, but it was almost like that, you know, your, your gut drops a little bit, right. a little, you know, whatever, that's a negative one, butterflies for the positive one. Just those feelings of, this is it, like, I did it. Like, the hard part of going through the transition of getting here is over. Now comes the hard part of trying to make a life out here, just the beginning. So, but that subsided. Once I got into my rhythm and got my place and hit the ground run and that kind of all mellowed out. And then t taking the flip side of that, was then there a moment where you were, let's say you got out of an audition, maybe your first one here, where you were like, this, this was definitely meant to happen. I'm glad I did this. Yeah, it, it, was, it was, I would say it came actually right around the January time. Um, I auditioned for my first feature film, a uh, lead role in a feature. And then I got the call back. I remember I got the call back and it was on Super Bowl Sunday. And I'm a huge football fan. Go Browns. Super Bowl 2016. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, that's a lie. They're not going to make it this year. I wish. Um, but I just remember that and going back to the callback, and it was like four hours long before the Super Bowl because they were well aware of that. And then I got a phone call like a week later that said that I got it. Are you willing? You know, do you have, you know, we're shooting for X amount of days, a few hours away, et cetera, et cetera. And that was kind of my first big time experience on a set and I was one of the leads in it and it was it's called Blackwater Vampire just a fun little horror film and through that and through those connections I've made friendships and it was the best experience and it was just like this is awesome you know it was just one of those things where it was like these these are the moments that I still remember to this day like filming this and making these friends there's a, there's a camaraderie when you get into that little like even if it is independent film but you get into that little niche um, there is, there's just everyone's in it together. Everyone has the, kind of the same up and down struggles and it's, it was fun. So that was kind of my like happy light bulb moment. When you got that call back, you felt like? Well, when I got the call that I got it. Cause the call back, right, right, there right. was some dude there looked just like me. Both wore black t-shirts. It was black t-shirt day at the callback apparently. Chad maybe. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> there, everyone's named Chad out here that looks like me. Every blonde guy, Chad or Tyler. And uh, so yeah, but then a couple, you know, a week or so later, I got the call and it was awesome. Got paid to make a movie. It's kind of like the dream.